Police State Updates. We start off with a video that you have to check out for yourself. There's nothing really to play but except the sounds of screaming fools burning their own city because their idiotic sports team was able to shove a ball into a hoop more than some other stupid sports team was. <laughs> Sorry. As longtime listeners probably know, I'm a longtime sports hater. Of course, someone like myself was a favorite target of some of the bigger jocks at school. I was fortunately, I was never beat up. It came close a lot of times. But God, if you know, you don't like sports and your hair's kind of long, you must be a fag. And again, nothing against you if you play sports. It's just the overall bread and circus of the whole operation that I abhor. So the Lakers won the championship, basketball, whatever. And fools went out Woodstock 99 style because it's a lot of the same Mookie type folks. But again, shit hits the fan plan, covering what an out-of-control mob looks like. But further down the police state updates, Pentagon revives Rumsfeld-era domestic spying unit. More on that from Raw Story. And we've said it time and time again. The names change. They push it down. It's whack-a-mole. It pops up somewhere else. U.S. Predator drones to surveil Mexican border as the border wars definitely heat up. California license plates might go digital and show advertisements. Minority report coming more and more true every single day. New Jersey naval base was under lockdown in Lakehurst. New York City car bomb suspect Faisal Shahzad has pled guilty. The Manchurian candidate calls it war. Chester, Pennsylvania, placed under a state of emergency. More on that from DelcoTimes.com. Pennsylvania town simulates aerosolized anthrax attack. That is from BioPrepWatch.com. The TSA exercise joined in with Ohio and West Virginia first responders. And we have, from the Las Vegas Institute for Security Studies, the seven signs of terrorism. Again, from NationalTerrorAlert.com, and we thought about playing the clip for that, but again, this is one of those things that kind of seems like I've played that before. That gets difficult to track. Sometimes the... And and that's what it's all about, you know. And, And these guys line of work, they have to, you know, use a lot of repetition to catapult the propaganda. Supreme Court upholds law against advising terrorists... More on that from Los Angeles Times. New York Port Authority warned of alleged terror threat. That was late last night. Again, nationalterroralert.com. But we got the update from the New York Post. NYPD launches ambitious downtown surveillance camera plan. Network of surveillance cameras to combat terrorism and detect suspicious behavior in lower and midtown Manhattan. Of course, this all fronted out by Raymond Kelly, head of NYPD. Arrest made after car with weapons and gasoline found near the G20 summit, but that was just the beginning, and that was from Fox News. But we also have another update, as again, the G8, the G20 starts to kick into gear. We've been covering over the last several weeks the buildup, the police state buildup for our elites and front men and misleaders. The drills, the military, private military industrial complex infesting every area of Toronto in the weeks and months leading up to this very weekend. As again, a lot of things all kind of swirl around at the same time. We always kind of watch warily when there's a weekend that seems to have a solstice, which of course, you know, pagan numerology. These guys are all essentially, they love the occult. A lot of them won't make a move without consulting their occultants, if you will. The World Cup, the G20, the Solstice, 
We now have U.S.-Israeli warships steaming ahead. But the AFP reports Toronto turned into fortress for GA G20 summits. Thousands of Canadian police threw a tight security net over eastern Ontario province Thursday as world leaders began arriving for key summits focused on economic recovery and development. That's what they tell you. But then it gets even worse this morning. Again, from Kurt Nimmo writing that Dan Dix of PressForTruth.ca reported this morning that Charlie Veach of the Love Police was arrested yesterday in Toronto for refusing to cooperate with the Stasi. Charlie Veach produces, of course, videos of his confrontations with government officials and police. He was on Alex Jones' show in May, but he was just on the most recent episode of the Corbett Report, and we're going to get into that. But now Charlie Veach got arrested. We also, I believe, have We Are Change founder Luke Radowski and some of his mates denied entry into Canada, period, trying to get in from Buffalo, New York. And the lockdown is on. The last one of these meetings, I believe, or at least the one we saw closest, was in Pennsylvania, where they, of course, were using all those weapons that you always thought were just for those dark terrorists over in some land over there. But no, now they're for you. And we always have to watch out for provocateur protests, where spooks, feds, patsies, triple agents, whatever. Provocateur violence to get the police cracked down, demonizing any kind of dissent, in the eyes of the fools glued to the 24-7 news blather. So we watch for false flag agent provocateur events during these kind of protests. And again, everything's a powder keg. Everything's a tinderbox looking for a spark. Our last police state note, another I believe this is the latest article up on tarpoli.net on Obama's strategy for the G20 would be keeping toxic derivatives in charge of the world economy. And those were our police state updates, but again, you see more and more and more. It's all related. It's all connected. The G20, the money, the police state, the sound wave cannons, the internet bills, the banksters, the spills, the greenwash, all of it, all connected. We should now tell you, my friends, that we are into hour number two of episode 175 for MediaMonarchy.com. It's June 25th, 2010. My name's James Evan Pilato. I'm your host and webmaster of the site and show MediaMonarchy.com, your source for alternative news, politics, conspiracies, and cover-ups. Broadcasting live, as always, every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time on the Portland Radio Authority, PRARadio.org, and simulcast live on ZeroPointRadio.com on 92.3 FM and 1670 AM in Casper, Wyoming, the worldwide home of free speech, revereradio.net, and we are streaming live video on ustream.tv slash mediamonarchy.